G'day friends. Today I'm going to be talking Australia. Specifically, what modifications, if any, should we be making to our Land Rover Defender camper for our journey around Australia? We are about to embark on an Australian overland adventure that could last up to two years. So I've got a few in mind that I'll speak about in just a minute, but firstly, I wanted to talk about why we'd even consider making any modifications to our highly capable setup. We've been doing this for quite some time through some pretty remote locations and tough conditions. As you're probably aware, Australia is massive. Actually, Australia is one of the most sparsely populated countries in the world, with more than 80% of the population living in the coastal zones. That means there's a whole lot of empty space in the middle, with huge distances between service points, and most of the time, no phone reception outside of the towns. I would almost go so far as to say that other than maybe some places in remote Siberia, Australia has some of the most isolated places on the planet. And if all goes to plan, we hope to take you guys along to visit them with us. Now, before I list the modifications that we're thinking about, I will mention that we're not going into this blind. I grew up in Western Australia, spending plenty of time in the bush. And together with Steffi, we traveled Australia for a couple of years in our 80 series land cruiser and self-built camping trailer. First modification, or should I say addition, we are going to add an additional 60 litres of water storage. I'm going to do this using a heavy duty potable water bladder. We currently have 120 litres of water capacity. That's between the Defender and the Camper. We use on average 10 litres per day. That's for showers, washing up and drinking. That gives us roughly 12 days. Ideally, we'd like to have the capacity to last two to three weeks without relying on natural sources or wells. I've chosen to give a heavy duty water bladder a go because it's lightweight and it can also be rolled up and stored away when not in use. We won't always fill this water bladder, it'll only be used for the more remote trips. There's no point carrying the extra 60 kilograms if it's not required. This bladder when full is 60 centimeters by 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters and fits nicely in the rear footwell of the Defender. The next job we'll be doing. We are going to add an additional fridge freezer to our setup. This will be primarily used as a freezer to store meat and veggies for our extended trips out bush. This additional freezer will be installed on the rear seat box because we're going to remove the remaining double seats that we've got in the back of the Defender. By removing these extra seats, we'll create a large amount of extra storage space and we'll also balance the additional weight that we're gonna add by getting the extra fridge. The freezer will be an angle 42 liter. Why this one? Because dad's got a spare one in the garage that he's generously said I can borrow long term. I still have to negotiate with dad on how long this long term loan is and if it can be maybe possibly arranged into a permanent thing. Cheers dad. This freezer will be powered by the Defender's auxiliary battery, which will be topped up by an additional 50 watt solar panel that I'm going to install on the roof rack and that'll be going through an MPPT charger. On the other side of the rear seat box, we're going to install a large storage box similar to what we had in bear number one, spare tires. Now I have often mentioned that I believe carrying two spare tires is excessive unless you're traveling to some more remote regions in the world, specifically Australia. For some of the more remote tracks we plan to do in Australia, I'll definitely carry an additional spare tire, but I'll only carry the rubber, not the rim. If required in an emergency, I can pop the rubber off the rim. It's not an easy job, but completely doable with the right tools on the trail. We would strap the second spare tire on top of the existing spare tire on the roof rack. Another addition that I ordered the other day that I will admit I'm pretty excited about is a four liter aluminium compressed air tank. This will go in addition to our ARB twin cylinder air compressor. Having this additional capacity of compressed air will have several benefits. Inflating the tires faster, less wear on the compressor itself, re-beating tires if required, and also with the use of an air gun, blowing all of the red dust off the vehicle and the camper. The Aussie Outback red dust. Let's talk about this stuff for a minute. We will be attempting to do a complete reseal of our setup. Panels, doors, vents, 
pretty much any ingress point that we can get to. We do know whatever we do, it will not be enough. The red dust of the Aussie Outback is some of the finest powder you can possibly imagine, and it gets absolutely everywhere. Dealing with this red dust is a constant mission and you really can't let it get to you because there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. We'll do our very best to get the rig dustproof, but you're fighting a losing battle, especially when you drive a Defender. We get snow coming through the door seals in a blizzard, so we've got no chance against this red dust. We will also be adding a UHF radio to our setup as it's required on some of the Outback trails and generally just a good idea for safety. I'm still undecided between an inbuilt radio or handheld, so any advice is welcome. While I'm talking safety devices, it's not a new addition, but I will just mention that we do carry a Garmin InReach Mini as our two-way messaging device and emergency rescue beacon. Before finishing up, I just wanna to touch on an existing modification that we made when we built Bear 2. Our long range main and auxiliary diesel tanks. 140 litres and 70 litres respectively. More than enough capacity for travel in Outback Australia. No need at all to carry additional jerry cans. All right, I think that's covered all of the modifications that we are going to be making to our grizzly and bear once he reaches Australian soil. As always, we love to hear from others and I'm sure there's plenty of people watching that have got far more Aussie Outback experience than me. So please do leave a comment with your thoughts, advice, ideas, I'd love to hear from you. Unless of course that advice is to buy a Toyota. That advice will be first laughed at and then ignored. Take care everyone and we'll see you next time. Welcome to Australia. The noise of the Aussie birds. <laughs>